Iron Within Brothers! Yes, and in this episode we're going to be painting some perfectly normal space wolves. That's right, this is how I've been painting space wolves for my friend Mateus at work over at DHL Selfridges. So can I just start by saying Zelazny Wojownicz, <laughs> which is apparently Polish for Iron Warriors. So you might be looking at this and going, this is a bit out of the ordinary for you. Why, why are you painting space wolves? You're, you're an Iron Warriors man. Yes, that is true. But I know Mateus wants me to paint more of his Iron Warriors. He's just given me the Storm Fang to, to work on. So that's going to be fun. And this, this will be a, a nice reminder to, to get me back into it, to, to remember what the steps are. So I've got a bit of a cheat sheet. We're going to start with a nice heavy layer of Rus Grey or rust grey however you want to say it yeah, and don't don't worry about being neat at this stage like we're so early on just get the paint on the model um, we're going to avoid things like the the chainsaw blade and the the horns a bit if we can but we're not we're not worried at this stage boys and girls just get the paint on the model that's all that matters so yeah, so this is less of a, oh hey, painting Space Wolves is so fun, you should do this too. This is more of a, one day I will just forget how to paint them and this will be a nice reminder. So f after the Ruth's Grey, we're going to use the Fenrisian Grey as a, just a lighter, sort of dry brush. I mean, it, it's not 100% dry brush. You do still want some of the paint to smudge around on there. I mean, the, the lightest dry brush will come later on when we're putting white on top, but that that's that's a, a fair way away yet. Like you, you've got a while before that. Now, I want you to keep in mind that while I'm painting this, I have to focus on recording and making sure the lighting is good. The lighting's terrible in this video, so I apologize for that. But, um, in reality, these guys are not very fast. I mean, you know, once you get the wash on there, things pick up. And these first few layers, we're going to be blitzing through. But these do take a little bit of time. So we've got that on there. That's a nice little highlight to all of our grey-blue panels. And now we're going to focus on painting the weapons. So keep it simple. Abaddon Black. We're just going to paint the bolt pistol and the chainsword in black. I like to mix a little bit of water in with the Abaddon Black when I'm putting it on there. It just helps it to flow a little bit more. We're not trying to wash it out. We're not trying to do a one-to-one -one or anything like that. Just a little bit of water just to help push it around on the plastic. Like at this stage, if you're making a mess, don't don't sweat it. You can go back. You, you can go back and touch up at any stage. You don't need to worry. But there you go. That's dried on there now. So the next stage is going to be these armor panels. So we're going to start with Mephiston Red, which is quite a nice, quite a nice solid crimsony red color. And the best way to do this will be with layers. So water down your, your Mephiston Red, because we don't want to see brush strokes. We just want nice, nice, crisp, hard redness. So a couple of layers of that even though it's been watered, that'll be fine. Now, don't worry about hitting the trim detail on the shoulder pads. If you're doing the shoulder pads, you might be doing the legs. Um, because we're going to be covering those in lead belcher and silver paint later. So just get your armor, like any spe special coloring you want to do, just get that on the model. But you could put this anywhere. You could put it on the knees. You could put it on across the torso. This is just to add a bit of the tribal element to Space Wolf armor. So we're going to use Avalanche Sunset for our yellow. And as you can see, it's again watered down quite nicely. So we're just going to do multiple thin layers to build up that solid yellow base. Rather than slosh on one thick layer and it doesn't quite dry right and it looks a bit lumpy and bleh. So we're going to do that on his other shoulder pad. Now I'm not going to be doing any fancy hazard stripes or anything in this. The most we will get into will be some uh, Space Wolf like dags, like the triangular tribal markings that they have. So you don't need to worry about masking anything off or anything like that. 
Alright, next step we're going to be doing the horns on this space wolf in Ushabti Bone, as well as any wolf's teeth or wolf's claw talismans that are scattered all over him. That's the one thing when it comes to space wolves. They really do love their their tribal talismans. They're sort of they they are incredibly feral. It's quite good. We uh all right, so just before I tell you a story, the next step is we're going to be doing the wolf pelts and wolf tails so you can mix up your own gray using black and white or in this case i'm going to be using celestra gray and just putting it straight on the model but uh yeah i was going to say i remember the first time we showed our friend uber at work um space marines and 40k in general and we showed him space wolves and the first thing he said about them is they look primitive so ha ha primitive space wolves if you're going to have a wolf skin, like I've got on this guy, as a bit of a, a cloak, use some red just on the back to make it look like that sort of fleshy hide colour. Then we're going to mix up some Gehenna's Gold. I'm leaving the, the lead belcher stage until absolute last, because we've got so many extra details around all the, the silver that it's easier to blot in these first, and then use the silver to clean up those areas. There you go. I mean, I'm not overdoing it with the Gehenna's Gold. Space Wolves, you do like to have that mix of metals. It's not just silver, and that's it. Now, I'm using my uber mega small and also heavily abused layer brush here because what we're doing is the fine fiddly work now with the lead belcher and filling in those trim details. But I want to say this, if you're painting a model and you go, all right, this calls for the small brush or all right, I've used the small brush now and now it's time for the big brush. Just do it. Just do it. There's no need to struggle. If you look at a situation and go, I should be using a different size brush, just wash the one you're using and pick up, pick up the correct size. Like, don't, don't sweat it. I see a lot of tutorials and I, I know a lot of people that paint where... They really sort of hinder themselves because they go, no, this is, I'm using my small brush, so I must use the tiny brush now. It's like, no, no, use the right size for the job. So there you go. You can see already that just by using that lead belcher, this guy is looking pretty good. Um, finally, we, we've got those like power cables or whatever the hell they're meant to be, like the seals on the suit. I'm going to use some Eschen Grey, but you could go for the Dryad Bark, you could go for the, the dark brown colour if you like. It's just to sort of help add a bit more, more depth to this guy. I like, I do like greys on grey, and black, black tribal markings on a Space Wolf do look really good, as you'll see later on. But there we go, we have blotted in, for the most part, all the base colours. Now I'm going to put some red in for the eyes and I'm going to use some Mornfang brown for any straps, any threads, any like lengths of string that are holding those wolf claw talismans in place. But now, yes, it is time for the Norn Oil. Now unlike a lot of uh, model painting, oh, oh, would you look at that? Any of you guys ever have this happen to you? I'm used to having it like fly off and the bottle spill over and all sorts, but I can't say I've ever just pulled the lid straight off. So unlike a lot of tutorials where you might see them just splash the wash all over, what we're going for is a controlled application. So we're putting it where we want it, and that is in the creases, in the crevices, and along any seams, any joins. The exception to that then are these wolf talisman areas where yes we do want the wash to just go straight into all the individual fluffy bits and just do the hard part for us because if i was to just slap null oil over this whole thing or agrax earth earthshade it would just darken the gray too much we want we want that fenrisian gray to stand out all right agrax earthshade time so I like to use that for any yellow and red areas. So in this case, around the shoulder pads. But you can you can just use this instead of the Norn Oil for the cracks and crevices. But it's how I like to do it. Now, I'm a heavy proponent of using white paint as a dry brush. But 
man, I have no luck with ceramite white. I don't know why it just keeps drying up on me, and it just turns to just rubbish. This ain't that Citadel dry crap. This is like actual base paint that's dried out in the pot. So no, I've abandoned that. I use um, Army Painter or whatever this War Painter, um, just white in a dropper bottle, because it it just lasts longer. And, and I'm tired of it drying in the tubs. Only the Ceramite White does this to me. Nothing else does. All right, so we're gonna use one of our more abused brushes for this dry brushing stage. So make sure you haven't got much on there and just gently go over your wolf cloak and the any wolf tail talismans. And then really, really gently, and I mean really gently, over any of the hard edges and the flat surfaces of the power armor. I know it's hard to see in this, but you should be able to see in the next clip. There you go. Like it just adds a little brightness to it, which I really like when painting space wolves. I think this is what helps me when you see, have that moment, you go, oh yeah, that looks nice. This is that, oh yeah, it looks good, nice moment for me. And again, we, you know, we're using Stormhost Silver. We're going over the metal areas. I mean, we can always touch up any areas that have been darkened too much or lightened too much, so it's not a problem. Now, at this stage, what I'd like to do is do some black lining. So we're going to take the Chaos Black again, or Abaddon Black, and we're going to add water, and we're going to add quite a lot of water. I mean, this, this ends up being like a one to three ratio, and I actually mess up. I should actually go and add even more water to this, because if you see right now, that's too heavily pigmented. That's just too strong. So I add one more sort of amount of water and even that, even that's too heavy. It needs to be even lighter. And what we're doing is we're going around every single piece of trim, every single crack. If there is a join between anything on this model, we are putting a thin line of black along it. Now I'm using a brush that I'm comfortable with and it is a small brush. But honestly, it's so worth it. It is so worth it. And if you water down the black paint enough and take your time and just control the chaos, it, oh man, it works too well for what it is. It's so simple. I started doing this on my, my regular Iron Warriors and it works so well. But I, and I'm sure you could achieve the, the same effect with like a contrast paint or whatever, but black paint, some water, done. It doesn't take long. 10 minutes, just sit there. I mean, you've been learning the model up till this point, so just take your time, enjoy it, and there you go. So he's looking really good now, but there's some areas that we need to touch up, like the shoulder pads and the the wolf cape at the back. Again, just using some red, lightening up that shoulder pad. And I think on this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a diagonal wolf tribal motif so it's going to be diagonal dags going from left to right and or horizontal i suppose and yeah it's just simple enough oh it, man it is so hard to paint with a camera in your face so let's just edit to when the black's done there you go and how do you get crisp clean line crisp clean lines you just go over with the base color and then if you mess it up, go over the black, and then if you mess it up, go over the red, and back and forth and back and forth until it looks spot on. Oh, look at that. The next step here will be sorting the eyes out, sorting the lenses on the eyes. So going back in with some red and trying to dot in that shape. I mean, it's it's quite a, a flat semicircle. It really is difficult to catch with a brush, especially when you've got a camera in your face. So, whoop, there's a mistake. There you go. And I'm just working it up with yellow into the red just to lighten it each time to create that beaded gem effect that we all love. And again, if you make mistakes, just get some of your base color and just go back over the top. Don't, don't stress, don't struggle. Just paint models. Well, there you go. So, I've been showing you this one guy, but I've been doing five in total at the time. 
and with a lot of space wolves you'll see like plasma weapons or frost weapons and the way my friend Mateus wanted them is so you could see this icy cold blue glow coming from them and in order to do that get some white paint water it down and apply that to where you want it to glow if you've seen any of those new Necron tutorials with the glowing green eyes it's the same thing here so we're going to take Sotek green mix quite a lot of water into it I, I almost want to say as much as when we did the black lining but maybe not that much and you just put that over the top and look at that doesn't that look good I love it I absolutely love it Sotek green works so well as like this frosty glowing blue color so get that on the other side and then after that we're going to have some white paint mixed with a little bit of water at the very base of the plasma coils or whatever you want to call them so it really looks like there's a heat that's built up inside or would it be an icy cold an ice uh, freezing freezing heat i don't know what's, what's the opposite of a molten core a frozen core i guess <laughs> And here we are. So basing, with, you know, it's your standard practice. Sand, PVA glue, paint it brown. Do two layers of PVA glue. First to get it on the base and the sand and then second over the top to seal it. Now, if you ever have this happen, this is, this is how you fix it. So if you ever based a model and then your basing starts to peel up and you're like, oh God, what's happening to my model? Well, what you need to do in this case is get some super glue stick that under there and push it down and just use whatever it can be the cheapest it can be the most expensive super glue in the world but for whatever reason i've found that pva glue with sand yeah it works well enough but it has a ten tendency to want to pull away from the plastic bases but you glue that back down not a problem so dry brush with some shabti bone and then we're getting into the absolute final stages now boys and girls what i like on my bases is to have a black rim so abaddon black water it down and using quite a large brush just go around couple of coats i, I say do water it down do do a couple of coats because you don't want to see streaking lines on these guys and then finally take some valhalla and blizzard and smush some of that on the base first time i ever used this stuff i was like I'd, i've never seen this before what is this the second you get it on your fingers you know exactly what it is it's like that sterland mud but it's white it's like a silica based snow so a lot of people they try and do like their own homemade snow effects with like baking soda or whatever and pva glue bruh this stuff is just like white paint it's wonderful and here you go here is the finished space wolf ah fantastic fantastic so this should help me to paint the next what am i doing it's five wolf guard three more long fangs two more wolf guard storm fang and beyond the fell handed so that's going to be fun um i will say i i just finished reading um let me just see if i can find it quickly wolf at the door by dan abnett and that's really good i really enjoy wolf at the door what a good what a solid read it's from uh book 10 of the horus heresy where it's uh the multiple short stories but yeah it, it makes me appreciate that the le the different legions did go through difficulties when uh coming across human worlds but yeah what can i say it makes a makes a nice change from the old iron warrior boys and if you have a look you can see the the change I've had in my painting ability over the over the months look it's it's come a long way since when I was first recovering those eBay Marines and I know sometimes it could be hard to see because my lighting's not perfect and I'm just using my phone camera but I hope that you can see that these guys they, they look pretty good I'm happy with them I, I think they look pretty nice and I know that Matush Matush you're gonna enjoy them as well my friend well not these ones these are my perfectly normal space wolves your perfectly normal space wolves are, are next on the painting table my friend and this guy this one's quite special this is actually one of the first chaos space marine models i had from back when i was a kid and i managed to recover him 
Um, so at the time, I think all that was usable was like his legs, his torso, and his head. And that was just because I couldn't separate those. So everything had to be sort of new put on there. But yeah, thank you for watching, boys and girls. And as always, I will see you all in the next episode. Iron Without Brothers!